When is it smart to pretend to be stupid? There was this Chinese restaurant near where I live. Years and years ago, a guy came in and handed the greeter a note that said, I have a gun, give me your money. The woman examined the note and then handed it back to the man, shaking her head. You want food? What you want to eat? The man began to quietly explain that he had a gun. Gum? What gum? We have no gum. You want chicken? While she was busy with this guy, one of the chefs in the back caught on to what was going on and called the police. Of course, the greeter spoke perfect English. Less serious, but I heard a story about a Chinese-Australian kid getting busted for not having a train ticket. When the inspector confronts him, he responds in this very heavy, Wah, I know understand, ignorant Asian migrant accent. Eventually the inspector gives up and just tells him the rules and to have a ticket next time. After the inspector leaves, the kid turns to his mates and says in a perfect Aussie accent, Fuck, I love being Asian. If you know a lot about a topic, and someone is trying to give you poor advice on that topic, and you don't really feel like spending the next 30 minutes trying to make them understand the error of their ways. Finishing up med school so I know a few things about the human body. Not going to spend my day telling my barista that we doesn't cure cancer just because he saw a YouTube video that said otherwise. Just nod and agree. Just nod and agree. When your family asks you to fix their computer, the first time you do it, Every problem they have down the road is on you. Yeah, my mom has called me from 300 miles away to have me fix some computer issue of hers. I end up having to remotely access her computer with join.me and it's a pain. Click on the orange button. I don't see it. It is right in the middle of the homepage. It says about. Should I click on that? No. We provide a variety of services that. No, go back. Go back. And have offices in 15 countries including. My father had this habit that my mother's constantly reminded me of since he died. No matter how well versed he was on a subject, he always let the other person do the talking first, then would ask them questions. Not only was he able to learn more, but it naturally made him entertain opinions contrary to his own, making him a much more open and humble person. If the person didn't know what they were talking about, the discussion didn't descend into an argument. They just slowly realize they're talking to someone much more informed based solely on the questions he was asking, which in turn made them a lot more open to receiving an alternate opinion as well. When the cops show up at a house party, who lives here? I dunno. Who broke this bottle in the street? Hmm, no idea. Where are the drugs? Drugs? What drugs? Who drives the 2005 Camry out front? Beats me. When you need someone with a fragile ego to cooperate. I feel like it can be useful. If you intentionally lower someone's expectations of you then you may have more options available to you later. Depending on the situation of course. Slightly related, isn't there an old proverb that's like, it's better to keep your mouth shut and be thought a fool than to open it and remove all doubt. When your former employer is getting audited by the IRS and you are just a cashier at the car wash. In many negotiations, the ignorant person will come out ahead. Stupid questions take time and can wear an adversary down. I've asked a car salesman, How much do I save if you take out the sunroof? Because I don't want it. Of course he thought I was an idiot. But the next thing you know the value of the sunroof is being deducted from the price. On a larger scale, the Russians have historically used this tactic when negotiating things like treaties. They've often pulled the language card. Their interpreters are not understanding what you're saying, and they need every line explained over and over. Stupidity wears people down, and they'll give you what you want just to get rid of you. When playing with kids, let them show you things you never knew before. This is so pure and good. When I was in college, I got a job at Sam's and they told me I was in electronics because I knew computers. Later my manager chewed me for not zoning everywhere on my side of the store. Pretty soon. I lost all my computer knowledge and became a drooling idiot that just put boxes on shelves. If you get a job in retail, any extra skill you have is just a liability without extra compensation and you'd get used for it. Anything IT related unless that's your job. I was the unofficial IT for my department until a woman brought in her laptop from home and left it on my desk to fix. I told her that was very inappropriate and that I can't take the liability of fixing her home computer. She slammed my door and cursed me out, and it was the only time I've ever yelled at a co-worker. 
When you regularly find yourself in situations where you have to interact with stupid people for long stretches of time. I interact with uneducated blue-collar men in their 50s and 60s every day. Being too smart around them is a surefire way to marginalize yourself. When talking to people who like to argue for the sake of it, no matter how well-versed your views are, they will find some stupid ways to shit on them. Just shut up, pretend you don't know anything and take the wind out of their sails. When someone is obviously trying to exploit you. In eastern Ukraine, a friend and I got stopped by some thug on the street who was threatening us and implying that he was going to take our money. We pretended not to know Russian. It ended up going fine. So I guess in that moment it was smart to pretend to be stupid. Similar thing happened to me on the streets of D.C. Some guys came up to me and asked for my money and cell phone, but I'd just gotten out of a loud concert so I couldn't hear them at first. I just nodded and laughed and kept walking. They followed for a minute but then I got to an area with more people and they melted away. Reminds me of the guy whose reply to a guy telling him, I have a knife, was, no, I'm good I don't need one thanks. If you're developing a relationship with someone and they start talking about a subject that you're well versed in, just let them explain it, ask questions and it'll naturally make your relationship progress. When someone says I'll shoot you with a gun if you're smart, nearly always. I've come to find if you act like you don't know, most people will tell you what they know. If you do this long enough, you should acquire all the world's info. Seriously though, play dumb until you can't anymore and if you're ever called on it. I usually just keep playing dumb and say something like, Well, I wasn't sure if that was actually right or not. Now we know. When you're trying to catch someone in a lie, when you know all the details, but you just want to see them weave a tapestry of bullshit. 1975 Cambodia. They executed anyone seen as being too intelligent. In a deposition, the less you say, the better. Also, I don't know, and I don't remember, are perfectly acceptable answers. In a bar with a bunch of drunk violent rednecks. I'm a recent graduate with a science degree and I'm applying for lots of jobs. I have my professional CV for career jobs, and then I have my slightly crappier, Shorter CV for applying to dead-end jobs. My logic is that a company doesn't want to employ a recent science graduate in a customer service role if they know the employee will jump ship as soon as a career opportunity comes along, so I dumb myself down. When you find a coworker's mistake at work, if you tell them it's wrong many people automatically get defensive. If you say you don't understand why they did something the way they did, they can find the mistake themselves. Also, if there is no mistake, it won't blow up in your face. When you happen upon a hostage situation, if you pretend to be mentally challenged, it's possible you'll be able to catch the dude off guard. True story. Fifteen years ago, I worked in a bank, and we had a girl come in as a part-time staff member over the summer. She was cute, platinum blonde, had a perfect golden tan, and worked as a promotions girl in the evenings. She and I became friends even though I am essentially the polar opposite of what I just described. She would tell me how she spent her weekends in a pink bathrobe, eating yams on the couch with her little dachshund. I took her to be a lovable little ditz, until the day day I asked what she did September through May. She taught physics and applied mathematics. After recovering from that piece of information, I asked if she realized that she gave everyone the wrong impression of herself. Her answer? Yes, I use it to my advantage. When I stumbled across a thief behind a shelf, breaking the security case off of a multimedia game with a knife, he is cornered, knife in hand looking at me startled. I just said very clearly and astonished in a dumb voice, Oh, you don't have to take out the game from the display case by yourself. They will do that at the register for you. They have a device to open it. The register is down that aisle next to the CDs. With that I took a step back, pointing at that faraway area. He smiled, put that knife in his pocket said thanks and left in that direction. I immediately ran to the staff room shaking. My boss had been stabbed through the hand by a thief before, and he had told me that story. As a girl it's best to act stupid when guys ask makes lewd and inappropriate questions or statements. Ask them what that means or why it's so funny because you don't get it or understand then they might try to explain and make an ass of themselves. Usually they stop finding it funny and it gets awkward and I keep it up asking them why they find that funny and to better explain it. It's a great way to get them to go away. When is it smart to pretend to be stupid? Leave a comment 
and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this one.